Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael, I've got Nick, a senior from Bakersfield High School in with us this afternoon. And we also have Cooper, a fourth grade student from Stockdale Elementary in studio with us. And Cooper, there are a lot of different ways that people can call us up for math homework help. What do they need to do if they want to get a hold of us? For math homework help, call in Bakersfield 636-4357, toll free 1-866 six three six six two eight four email do the math at kern dot org we're online at do the math online dot net and on social media facebook instagram twitter and youtube do you have all that stuff facebook instagram twitter and youtube um no no nick what about you i do yeah i do right yeah. see so there's a difference in which students will have some of those social media things and as an old man I don't have any of those things either. So you have them, you don't, you get rid of them. <laughs> anyway, we have a lot of things going on this afternoon. We do have phone tutors available between 3.30 and 5.30 most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Just a reminder that kids calling today will be able to win themselves a ticket to the Kern County Fair. We'll talk a little bit about more of that in just a few moments. But how has fourth grade been going so far? Really good. What's so good about it? Um. I don't get a lot of homework in my teacher. You don't, what? You don't get a lot of homework. Mm -mm. I thought that as you got older in grades, you got more homework. That's what I thought. What about you? Do you have homework? I do have quite a bit of homework. As a senior, you have a lot of homework. Yeah. Do you think more than 30 minutes a day? Way more than 30 minutes a <laughs> day. Probably three hours, right? At <laughs> least a day. All right, so no homework. What else is so good about fourth grade? Uh, my teacher is really nice. Well, that is key because you're with the same teacher every day, mm -hmm. right? Now, do you think Nick has the same teacher every day? No. No. How many classes have you got right now? Seven. All right. So you've got seven different people that you need to satisfy all the yeah. time with what they want every single day, right? So when you get a little bit older, probably when you get in seventh grade, junior high school, you're going to have your math teacher say, all right, where's my math homework? And you can't go, well, I didn't do my math homework because I was doing my social studies homework, <laughs> right? Do you think they care about that? No. No. But how is math going so far this year? Really good. Really good? Let's find out. Go on over to the board. We're going to have you guys work on a problem. So, Cooper, I understand that you're working on multiplication right now. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Nick, why don't we write this problem up, up, up on the board? Let's go 318 times 7. All right. Cooper, why don't you go ahead and grab the other marker and explain to us the process you're going through while you're doing this multiplying. Okay. So, you would do it. 8 times 7, which is 56, and so you only put the 1's at the bottom, so you put the 6 at the bottom, and you put the 5 at the top, and then 1 times 7, which is 7 plus 5, so that's 12, and you put 2 at the bottom, and 1 at the top, and 7 times 3, which is 21, plus 1, is 22, and there's no other place to move anything, so you write it just at the bottom, and you get 2,226. All right, now, do you need to put any notation in there? Like commas anywhere? Um, yes. Where would that go? In between the thousands and the hundreds. Perfect. And read that number for me one more time. 2,226. All right. Nick, do you know another way to say that different than what Cooper just said. 
This, this is one of those picky little things as far as mathematics goes. So say it again, Cooper. 2,226. 2,226? You're doing the same thing he did, right? Exactly. So come on over here, boys. What you guys did is classic, all right? And a lot of students do that. They say 2,226 or 2,226. If I say $4.18, what has to be in that number between the 4 and the 18? A decimal. A decimal point, right? So when I say $4.18, the decimal point means and. So if you say 2,226, do you see how that could imply that you need a decimal point in there? Mm -hmm. So it would be 2,220, decimal point, 26. So just a little tiny thing that mathematics right there when you say the word and. Have you worked with decimals a lot yet? No. Well, in fourth grade, guess what, my young man? You're going to be doing a lot of those in fifth grade. But anyway, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. Time now for today's Math in the News. And in studio with us to talk a little bit about math and the services that they provide is Katie Wardell from Ford Dimension. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Good. So first of all, what is Ford Dimension? Ford Dimension is a student leadership program that's been in existence for 45 years. It's affiliated with Jim Burke Ford, and we take, actually we have Ford Dimension and Dream Builders. Okay. We take 32 area high school seniors, we interview them in their junior year, and um, then they come and be a part of our program, and they learn wonderful leadership skills, and they are paired with a community-minded company, and then that company helps them, provides advisors, and helps them come up with a community project that benefits a need in Kern County. Okay, so it's a leadership program for yes. students. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that most students already have done some sort of leadership during their high school days, but do they already have to be a leader to do well in this or even get into this program? Yes, they have to be very involved. Um, I think all 32, including Nick, who's one of our four dimension reps, um, are very involved. In fact, I don't even know how they get schoolwork done with all the things <laughs> they're involved with. But um, they have to, you need to start now if you're a freshman in high school or, or even a junior high, elementary school, run for offices, get involved with things at your school. That starts building your resume and then you'll feel confident to come interview for our program. You have to have a high GPA so we, we know that you can keep your grades up mm -hmm. when you're being involved with our program. And, um, and we look for all your student leadership skills. We look for clubs you're involved in, things you might be involved in outside of school, like your church or Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. Um, and we look at recommendations from counselors or teachers. And we go through an interview process. And we have about 205 applicants, and we only pick 32. I was going to say, it's a pretty lengthy process. And I know it there is. are a lot of applicants because Mickey, our son, had to go through this process yes. and was fortunate enough to be part of one of the programs. Nick, how did you find out? about the Ford Dimension? My sister's actually in the Ford, was in the Ford Dimension program, okay. so I learned from her about the program itself, and then I did it my junior year. And what kinds of things were you involved, because you're a senior now, what kinds of things have you been involved in during your high school years? I think high school, the easiest thing is definitely leadership. You can always get involved in student council and help your school run with different events that they have. Okay, and what type of project are you guys working on right now? So I'm with Team Dignity Health, and the project we chose to do was towards mental health and awareness, and as long as health and wellness. So we look towards being physically healthy, eating healthy, as long as mental health with that, and organizing with nonprofits to encourage and cultivate that type of lifestyle within students. And you students, you're the ones that have to go out and talk to these community members, get this whole thing going. Are there any nonprofits you guys have had success working with yet, or are you guys at the beginning of this? I don't know where you They're are at the, the project stages. yet. Yeah. yeah, we're still in the beginning stages, okay. and we're contacting those nonprofits right now. All right, well, because school just started, right? Yeah. I mean, we are still in September. Yes, I'm just right. remembering that this thing is like, <laughs> boom, go. And I mean, it, is. it takes it's a, a lot, lot of energy. It, it, it does take a lot of energy, but it's worthwhile. Now, we're going to go back in time a moment. Okay. How did you <laughs> first become involved in Four Dimension? Well, I went to West High School. Go Vikings, if anybody's watching. And, well, of course um, they are. <laughs> no, I mean from the Vikings, from West High. And what? I know West there's I know right. there's lots of people watching. 
But um, I was a four-dimension rep in 1990, way back. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't say you had to give the year, but <laughs> that's, that's okay. Right. That's okay. I think I look good for my age. Indeed you so do. So there you go. But um, no, and then I've been serving on the Jim Burke Education Foundation, which started the Dream Builders pr program portion of it. Um, for 20 years. So we've got some time. photos right here. Yeah, so this is these are the kids at the Boys and Girls Club. This summer they did a project called Spread the Love and they put together peanut butter and jelly um, snacks uh, for the kids at the Boys and Girls Club in Lamont and um, downtown at, so at the Armstrong are. Center. Mm -hmm. So there they are preparing. Experts they are. Yes, uh -huh, there's a group. But and here we were at Bessie Owens. We helped with a Dignity Health event there and that was during the summer. And this is um, our four, part of our Ford Dimension Group with uh, con uh, Assemblyman Vic Spong, almost a congressman. And Vince was also a Ford Dimension rep. And there's Nick with uh, Natalie and uh, Jake, and they're helping with the Bessie Owens event. So, and this is with our city councilman, Andre Gonzalez, at the Golden Empire Gleaners Breakfast. And they got to attend that and listen to him speak. Which and it looks like there's about nine, ten people in that group. There's ten. Of we students. Yeah, in the Ford Dimension, we, we take 32, and then we pick ten that are Ford Dimension Rep that goes with our old tradition of the 45-year program. And they represent Jim Burke Ford at different events. So okay. they have suits and things like that. And um, they, so they went to the Gleaners Breakfast. They'll do a, a, a visit with Congressman McCarthy and different things like that and represent our company. Do you remember the project you did? Oh, you know, we didn't do a project because okay. I was Ford Dimension. So there's only 10 of us. Oh, all right. So and it was, and Mr. Burke was uh, still living and Mikey Hay is the one who, created the program and ran it for 45 years and she just handed the baton off to me. Oh. So she's still involved, of course, because it's, it's her baby and she, she loves being right. with the kids. But um, we got to do a lot of leadership training. So we learned from different aspects of the company. We went to auto shows and things like that. So it's, it's changed over the years. And, um, but the projects are really amazing. The things that they come up with and do are just phenomenal. And they figure out projects that can carry on. So most of our projects, are still going and carried on by other people after they go to college. Nick, going through this experience, because you're just starting this, mm -hmm. what do you see right now that's a great benefit as you head out of high school? From the Ford Dimension program, it's definitely the leadership that comes along with it. When we have to go to different events and then work as a team, it really cultivates uh, teamwork that you can do within your team. And so yeah, I learned a lot from that, along with uh, how to run meetings that we have to do during each week. Okay. And being a senior, I know that you probably already have an idea what you're going to do upon leaving high school. Would you mind sharing that with us a little bit? Uh, my goal is just to go to a four-year university, which one right now I'm not sure about. But What's your number one choice? Right my now? number one choice right now is UPenn, their Wharton School of Business. Okay. Great. Good. Well, you know what? It'd be nice change of scenery also on the yes, other side it would. of the country, Beautiful. experience of all four seasons. <laughs> Get yourself a snow shovel also. That's but, uh, right. <laughs> anyway, we certainly do appreciate you taking out some time Thank to uh, tell so us about the four here. dimension and dream builders and things like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep Nick for a little bit, if that's okay. all right with I you. I think it's great. We're going to uh, use some of his leadership skills and give him some new skills right now. Excellent. And that is today's Math in the News. Once again, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Before we go out to the fair, we have a little something that we're going to talk about. So let's take a look at the screen right now. And Cooper, on the left-hand side, what do you see right here? A man and a cow. Yeah, so you see a man and a cow. Uh, any idea what's going on there? Um, no. No, I wouldn't either. I'd be like, oh, you got a man and a cow. What's the big deal? Yeah, do you have any idea who this guy is? Mm-mm. All right, you know what? Let's go to the next screen. In 1907, Sir Francis Galton asked 787 villagers to guess the weight of an ox. None of them got the right answer, but when they averaged their guesses, he arrived at a near perfect estimate. This is a classic demonstration of the wisdom of crowds, where groups of people pool their abilities to show collective intelligence. So what he did is he had this ox and he's asking everybody, hey, guess what the weight is? And what would you think the weight of an ox would be? 500 pounds. 500 pounds. Nick, what do you think it would be? I'll go with 700? 700 pounds. Do you think anybody might go 100 pounds? No. Maybe they could, right? I mean, there may be somebody really young and they go 100 pounds. Do you think anybody would say over 1,000 pounds? They could. They could be all over the place. But what he did is he asked 787 people. And when he added them all up and took the average, the average of everybody came very close. 
within 3% of what the ox actually weighed. And that's a little bit of what we're going to do right now out at the Great Kern County Fair. We're going to visit with Mary Lou and see what she's doing right now. We are today at the Great Kern County Fair and I have a lot of kids with me. You guys excited to be at the fair today? Yeah! yeah. Okay, so today what we're going to be doing is guessing taking an estimation of how many shapes you think are inside this bucket. Do you guys all have an idea of how many you think are inside the bucket? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a piece of paper each, okay? Oh, let me take that one. Each get one, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna write down your guess. So we're gonna start here with the pencil. Write down your guess. Here, I'm gonna give one to everybody. Oh, grab that for me. There you go, there you go. Do you need one of these? Do you need one of these? I need a couple more real quick. There we go. You're going to say, who else needs one? Do you need one? There you go. And I need one more. Does she want one too? All right. Okay, so take your guess. You guys have your guess? How many do you think are inside the bucket? 400. Why? What are you basing your guess on? Because it's halfway full. And half. Um, I see a lot of shapes. Okay. All right, what do you think is in there? I, my, my guess is 200. Why? Because most of the time, um, 200 shapes will fit to the exact height of that. Yeah, okay, we're going to move down. Eden, what do you think? 254. Okay. And what are you basing your guess on? Because it's not completely full, it's like a quarter. Like, wait, all wait, from the top, wait, it's like a quarter. Okay. Oh, Were you going to take a guess at two? Thank you. <laughs> and what do you think? Uh, 254. Uh, 200. You guys are both going together? Oh my goodness. What are you basing yours on then? Because it looks almost 300, but not quite. Oh, okay. Yes. What are you guessing down there? What number is that? 200. 200? How did you pick 200? I don't understand. Because it's half full. Wow. Here, I'm going to hold, hold that for me, okay? And what do you think? A hundred. A hundred. And what made you guess one hundred? Because there's a lot of in there. Yeah, okay, we're going to find out. We're going to pass the pencil over. What do you think? We have two hundred, we have two fifty-four, we have one hundred. What do you think your guess is going to be? Two ten. Two ten. Wow. And what made you guess two ten? Because if, if it's not three hundred, it could be two ten. Very good. Okay, moving on. What do you think? He says 210. She says 100. They say 254. What do you think? Maya. I see a 200. Daddy, too. What, do you, what do you think? Um, I think <coughs> that. 211. <laughs> My goodness. Sir, what do you think? I see a number right there. Do you know what number that is? 80. 80. Do you like that number or do you want to go higher? You like that number? Yes? Okay. Did I miss anybody? Did I get everybody? Do you want to take a guess, kiddo? All right. How many do you think are in this bucket? How many? How many shapes? Get it closely. I am. What did you get? 155. My goodness, we have a lot of great guesses. All right, everybody, you are going to have to tune in a little bit later. Check back to find out who is the closest or who is right on guess. Okay? We have a lot more coming from the Great Kern County Fair, but back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks for that, Mary Lou. Great to see the students out there and their guesses with how many objects were in that container right there. And we'll find out a little bit about more of that later on. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We have fourth grade student Cooper in with us. And fourth grade is going pretty good because you don't have any homework. We have senior from Bakersfield High School, Nick Pardo. And senior year is going pretty good because you do have a lot of homework, yep. but it's your last year right now. 
and we have April with us also, so we have a lot of math that we're going to start working on right now. Just a reminder, if you phone in to do the math today, between now and 5 o'clock, and we do one of your math problems on air, you'll automatically receive yourself a ticket to the Great Kern County Fair. So just like Mary Lou out there enjoying everything, you also have an opportunity to get yourself a free ticket to head on out to the fair. And we'll even be talking a little bit about the food out there. Have you ever been to the fair? Yes. You have? Do you eat the food out there? Mm -hmm. Oh, let me tell you, the old man does too. I love that food. Does some of that <laughs> stuff out there? We're going to check that out later on. But since you're here, I need you to do some more work. You ready? Mm -hmm. Over to the board, young man. Nick, you're over there as well. Nick, what I'd like you to do is put up on the board four fours with some space in between each of them. After the last one, put an equal sign. Cooper, you select the number between one and nine. Um, seven. All right, let's make it equal to seven. Now, here are the rules, boys. You have to use all four fours. You can't eliminate any of them, and you can't substitute any of them. You have to use all four fours. You can add, subtract, multiply, divide. Group them with parentheses, put decimal points, use factorials, square roots. Not that he's going to know all of this, but you certainly will. You need to make sure that all four fours somehow come out to equal seven. Are you ready for this? All right, it's your problem. Nick is there to help you, but you're doing the problem. And April is also here in case you need some ideas to bounce off of and see if it will guide you to a closer. I definitely need ideas. Not yet. Let's try something. Uh, <laughs> so do you have to So have the how out? about you think about what makes seven? Um, three plus four. Three plus four. Anything else? Um, you could do six plus one. Six plus one. Anything else? Um. 7 plus 0. Or 7 plus 0. Anything else? 7 minus 0. 7 minus 0. Um, what about 5? Five? 5 and? 2. 2. Okay, so could you somehow get to 7 using 3 and 4, 5 and 2, 6 and 1? I don't know if we can get a 0. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you seven can. Yeah, there's zero. lots of yeah, possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven and zero. And you so, can also subtract to yeah. get to seven, yes. right? And, and he you did can say divide. Seven minus and zero. So yeah. lots of things. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Cooper, throw an idea out there and let's see how it works. Do you have to use all the fours in it? You have to yeah. use all fours. Okay. Um, can you add them into like one number? Or? Well, the, when you operate, you're going to get to seven somehow. So you can add, you can subtract, multiply, okay. divide. You can do any type of thing that you want. Okay. So let's let's think about where you're going. You've got four times four here, right? Mm -hmm. What's four times four? Sixteen. Okay. How do you think we could get to seven from sixteen? Subtract nine. Do you think there's any way to get nine from the two fours? Um. Subtract seven. Hmm. Oh wait, no. Um. We could change how we do the fours. We don't have to multiply. You can add. Uh, you can subtract. You can even divide. Um, 20. Oh, wait, yeah, I have it right. Um. And so, you have. 16, and then you can... You, you can only use four, the four fours, you can't... So once you add them all, you've used them all. Okay. So, so I have to get seven here instead, so let's... So I suggest you add two of the fours, and then do something else with the other two. Let's see what happens if we add these first two fours. So that's eight. So we know that these first two fours, if we add them, that will get us eight. How do we want to get to seven from eight? 
Subtract one. Okay. So we have two fours left, and we need to make them into a one. How do you want to do that? Um, you could add a, oh wait, no. Um, we can just walk through it if minus, we do. You could subtract one from both of them. Let's run through the operations that we could do with it. What's four plus four? Eight. Okay, so that's not one. Four minus four? Zero. Okay. Four minus three. What do we do four times four? That's 16. Oh. Four divided by four? Um, one. Okay. So we know that four divided by four is one. Do you want to put that over here? You can do that. So we have 8 and 1, and we need to get to 7. What should we do between those? Um, subtract the 1 from the 8. Okay. So you did 4 divided by 4. That's equal to 1. If we put that up here, put that in parentheses. We have 8 and 1. And what do you want to do between 8 and 1? Subtract them. Okay. So if we subtract the 2. 8 minus 1, what is that? 7. Okay, there you there go. go. Nicely done. So there's a lot of different ways that you could get 7, but that's one of the ways right there. So nicely done, boys. Come on Good over job. here. And for doing some great work right there, we're going to award you a free meal courtesy of our friends at Grillin' Burger. So congratulations on that. And Nick, I know that you've got to get going pretty soon, but what I'd like you to do is, just like the kids at the fair, I'd like you to take a look at that and give us your guess on how many objects you think are in there. And how are you coming up with your guess? Well, looking at this, if I flip it over, I could probably count about 15 shapes on the bottom. And if I look how high it is, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. So seven times 15, we have 105. So you're going to go with 105, or do you want to add more or well, take some away? we're at 105. It could go a little higher, so I'll round up a bit. 132. <laughs> That's a nice rounding yeah. from 105, 132. <laughs> it's all relative. I might be rounding from 100,000. <laughs> all right, so there you go, 132. Cooper, we'll give you a little more time. You can look at that. And uh, we'll get to their guesses right after this. Today we're at Gorman School, home of the Cougars, and we're here to... All right, we're back. We've got some fifth and sixth grade students from Gorman School. We're going to work with a little bit about area and perimeter. You guys ready to start? Yeah. All right, so... Here's what I want you to do. One last rectangle we're going to put on our papers. All right, so we're going to draw it kind of long like that and narrow at the ends. So more of a rectangle instead of a square this time. And choose a number between 3 and 10. 9. 9? All right, so we're going to make this 9, and we'll make it 9 feet. and choose a number between two and five. Five. Five? All right, so we'll make this five feet. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to find first the perimeter. So we can just put a P equals. Now the perimeter is the distance all around it. Okay, we can use the formula, two times length plus width, or we can just add them all up. So go ahead, add them up, and. Let's find out what you get for the perimeter. So the distance all the way around that figure. So if you need to label the other sides, you can do that to make it easier for you. All right, so we have a nine, a nine, a five, and a five. All right. And when we 
take nine, nine, five, and five, what do we end up with? 28. 28. 28 what? Uh, square feet. Just feet on this one, right? Because we're going around it, so we have 28 feet. Now, if we want to do the area, we're going to go length times width. Now, what is the length? Nine feet. Nine feet. And the width is? Five feet. Five feet. Five feet. So what's nine times five? Anybody know? 45. 45. So it's going to be 45, now what, feet? Square feet. Square feet. All right. So now we have 45 square feet. All right. So turn your papers over. Okay. And you're going to play in pairs. Okay. So one person is going to use their paper right now. Okay. So the person on the right, okay, so you're my partner right now, okay? So the person on the right, they were going to use their paper, okay? So the person on the left, you don't need your paper at all right now, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to roll a pair of dice, okay? I'm going to roll the dice, and you're going to multiply them. So I have 5 times 2 is 10. So what I can do is I can make a rectangle that covers 10 squares any way I want to do it. Now, how could I possibly cover 10 squares? Color them in. Cover but how do I know which 10 to color in? How do I measure it out? Go to them. X and Y. So how should I do it? Should I just go like this? No. So that's not going to be a rectangle. That's not going to be a rectangle? Wait, yeah, I could be that way. I could go to five, right? Could I keep going to ten? No, you shouldn't. And you could be a very skinny rectangle. It would be a skinny rectangle, right? So I could do this, right? I could shade it in. Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? I could shade it in where I have ten right there. Is there any other way I could have covered ten? That looks different than that. Yeah. How? So you, you could have put like go five ahead and, and, then, and then put the five on the other side too. So I could go five like this and go five like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I could color these all in. And, then mm -hmm. and, then you and I've got it. ten. And then you can do a vertical too. And I could have gone like this ten? Yeah. So there's different ways to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to play with your partner, okay? So I rolled a 10. So let's say I did this one, okay? And then Jacob will roll, and he'll, whatever he gets, and he can put his rectangle anywhere he wants, in any shape that he wants, okay? You guys got the idea? Yep. All right, let the games begin. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to go through. All right, so you guys have the idea of how you're going to do this? Okay, so what you do is you keep going. At the end of the game, the person with the most rectangles wins. Okay? Now, if somebody makes a really large one, is that going to be good or bad? Bad. It could be bad. Why? Because you won't have no more space. There won't be a lot of space left, right, yeah. for you if you're doing just large ones. You might have four very large ones, right? And the other person can make really small ones, and they have more rectangles than the other person. So this, just another extension of area and perimeter with the fifth and sixth grade students at Gorman School. <laughs> Once again, a big thanks to the staff and students at Gorman School. We had a great time. Those students were a lot of fun to work with, working with a little bit of area and perimeter. 
We do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon, and any students that phone in will automatically receive themselves a ticket to the Kern County Fair. We'll get to a phone call in a moment, but first, we're going to go back out to the fair right now and visit with Mary Lou and see what the food is going on. We are back at the Great Kern County Fair, and I am with Michael Compton of Willamette Valley Pie Company. Nicely done. You pronounced Thank it perfectly. You. you did a good job. How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. You have the cutest little booth. Thank you. Can we you tell that. us a little bit about your product? Sure, sure. So we basically have fresh pies and cobblers that we make, all with fresh fruit that we bring from the Willamette Valley up in Oregon. This is uh, just, it's kind of a labor of love. It's something that my wife, uh, with her grandmother, who just recently passed away, 94 years old, it was, a, it was just something she did as a kid. And we always wanted to have a food concession. We had other concessions like rides. This just was the natural progression. And what we really wanted to do was go back to that old fashioned food that fairs used to have. Not deep fried, not on a stick, fresh pie. This is what fairs were about. You know, baking, the community, the people coming together. And that's where it kind of got started. And how long have you guys been doing this? So this part of our concessions business for about six years now. Wow. Yeah. And how many, because do you just do fairs or we do you have other? No, we just do fairs. That's only, we just, we want to bake for six months and then when we're done baking, we don't want to bake. So we do about 36 shows a year. 36 shows in six months? Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. So like right now, when we left in July, we go 92 days straight between, we go from one show, like when we leave here, we'll tear down on a Sunday night. Monday, we're going to drive to the next show, start to set the trailer up. Tuesday, we'll finish setting up. Wednesday, we'll do all of our shopping and baking. Thursday, we're open again. So how do you estimate, because fairs run about two, two and a half weeks. Right. How do you estimate for how much product you're going to need for so each place? A lot of it now, I mean, we're in year six and we keep spreadsheets, spreadsheets of everything. I'm a, I'm a numbers guy, I'm a spreadsheet freak. So everything that we sell, I put into a spreadsheet. So I'm able to go back, look at it, analyze it, and go, okay, well, this is what we did last year. Figure every year we've kind of grown a little bit. So we add a little bit to it. And then what we do is we produce that ahead of time and we bring it. And I, I usually bring way more. In the middle of the year, I can get away with it because I can bring plenty of stuff. I have a big freezer truck, but I've only got so much room too. So, but I still, that's how I do it. It's just historical data that we just reevaluate. Okay, so I have some ladies here and this is Eden. Hi, Eden. Eden, do you have a question for Michael? Uh, how many pies do you make for the whole entire week? Yeah, so for this fair, Wow, that's a that's a really good question. And you know what's funny is now I, I don't think in numbers of pies, I think in cases now of pies. But I would say uh, 20, 30, 30 times four is 120 times five. You know what, I'll bet you we do almost a thousand pies. Yeah, and that's just counting our big pies that we make these slices out of. Then we've got all these little mini pies. So to give you an idea, we've already gone through 36 cases of 12 of just this one pie in the first five days of this fair, six days of this fair. So I've still got another six days to go. So yeah, we do a lot of pies. I mean, overall, we probably do close to 5,000 pies. Between the pies, the cobblers, and the turnovers, 5,000 units. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, my lovely wife, she home makes, everything is homemade, but she makes these cookies. And I mean, think about that. She's making cookies every day. We went through, I think, oh gosh, uh, uh, almost 100 cookies, no, 150 cookies of just the chocolate chip on Saturday. Wow. So yeah. And yeah. we're gonna meet your wife here in a second. Absolutely. Olivia, did you have a question? Yeah. What's your most popular pie and why like, yeah. is it your most popular? That's a really good question. So one of the most popular things that we have is peach cobbler. Uh, I, I, I would guess it's probably because it's just a traditional thing that people really like, but, the other one that were really popular is in our pies, Marion Berries. Marion Berries. though, to your region? Yeah, so the Marion Berries actually were developed in the Oregon State University in 1946. The first test beds of these were in Marion County, Oregon, hence the name Marion Berry. So down here, it's a real, I guess, treat. It's a novelty for you guys. Up in Oregon, you know, we have them all over the place. But when you go to Georgia, what do you get? You got to get a... Oh, the peach. A peach, peach. Yeah. yeah. You come to Oregon, you get a Marion Barrier, we don't let you back in the state again. Well, I know like in, um, is it Cambria, the Lullaberries? The Lullaberries, yeah. So the Marion Berry is actually the, the crossbreeding of an Alala, uh, the Alala Berry and a Shehalem Blackberry. Those two berries together are what make the Marion Berry. So there you go. And it's a specialty for us. There it is. Lacey, do you have a question? One last yeah. question. Can you give me an estimate about how many utensils that you have? Utensils? Is that, so are, you, are we talking about single-use utensils or the utensils that we use every day inside the trailer? Inside the trailer. So in there, 
Fortunately, we don't have a lot. So we've got five different, six different kinds of pies. So there's probably about six or 10 utensils for that. It's a little bit of knives. So I would say on average, maybe a total of 50 items that we use constantly. Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna go take a look inside and see all the workings behind. Yes. All right, so stay with us. <laughs> It smells amazing. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Can you let everybody know what your name is? My name is Stephanie Compton. Okay, Stephanie, so you guys have been doing this for six years. Six years. Now, did yes. it all start with your grandmother? Basic, well, I used to be a dental hygienist. That's how I met Michael. I cleaned his teeth. And then I joined him on the road. And uh, we used to have rides at the time. So I worked the rides, like the rock wall and the bungee and the walk on water balls. And I decided that I wanted to start something that was a little more, that felt like me. And my grandma definitely influenced that because she taught me how to bake and she's really into, was really into gardening and all that good stuff. So, so he handles the front. He handles the front. And you're back I, here. Yeah, yes. So when do you start cooking? So I start cooking about five hours before the start of fair. And I also do baking in the evening as well because I, we have so many items. I only have one oven, so I have to bake them at different times because they can't all go in the oven at the same time and they are at different temperatures and different times. So like the big pies need to be in at 330 degrees where the turnovers need to be at 400 degrees. So it's, it's it takes a lot of time. So because everything is so little and everything looks amazing, mm -hmm. smells amazing, what is the biggest thing when you know I need to get baking, I, I need to get something in the oven? What's so your like, well, I mean, I. I I guess I just from doing it for so long I can I know because Michael keeps a spreadsheet of what we've done in past years so I know that you know so today we did a certain dollar amount and I know that we did 60 servings of peach cobbler and I only have 20 servings left so I need to get more peach cobbler in the oven so I have enough for the night same thing with turnovers or cookies I make cookie dough ahead of time and I put it in the refrigerator so then if I'm getting low on cookies I can pop them in the oven and have fresh cookies. Awesome. Well thank you so much. We really awesome. appreciate letting us come in and visit. Thank, thank you. you and best of luck. Thank it you. smells amazing. <laughs> I'm sure it tastes just the same. Oh yes. <laughs> thank you again. You're welcome. All right come on down and check out the pie and cobbler. It is amazing and so we're gonna head back to the studio. Oh, I can tell you right now it's amazing because I had some of that in my stomach and my belly today because that is some good stuff. You eat pie and stuff like that? Uh, sometimes. Uh, sometimes? I'll eat it all the time I can. I don't eat that often though. Hey, anyway, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30. Right now we're going to go to the phones. And Ruby, how are you this afternoon? I'm great. How are you? I'm excellent. As soon as you're ready, let's hear what you're working on. Okay. The problem is 251. Over four divided, or with the division sign, and then open parentheses, negative three eight, and then closing parentheses. And that's the entire problem? Yes. Okay, so Ruby, we are dividing um, fractions here, rational numbers. Do you know anything about division of fractions? Yes. What should we do? Change the division sign to a multiplication sign. Okay, so, so those are opposite fact families. And I'm changing the division to multiplication. And what do I do with my first term right here? 251 fourths over 4. Do I ch you would, change that or I keep that? What do I do with that? You could keep it for this problem. Okay, so that one's going to stay the same. And then um, when I divide fractions, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I change the division to multiplication. And now I'm going to take the reciprocal of negative 3 eighths. So what would I do with negative 3 eighths to take the reciprocal? You would make the numerator the denominator and then the denominator the numerator. Okay, so the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator and the negative symbol stays. So now I can multiply. Do you simplify before you multiply or do you just multiply straight across and simplify after? 
Um, you can cross multiply, I believe it's called. So I can cross, cross simplify. Cross cancel. And basically what I'm doing is like eight and four. So I know that I can divide eight by four and I can divide four by four, correct? Yes. So if I um, divide eight, eight by four, what is eight divided by four? Two. Two. And then I have to, inside, divide it by numerator, I have to also divide my denominator. So four divided by four is? One. Okay. Okay, so can I simplify anywhere else? Nope. Nope. Um, can you? Okay. So we'll just multiply straight across. Straight across. across. Right. Okay, so um, 251 times two. Did you do that already? Yes. Okay, so if I multiply, I'm going to go 2 times 1, and 2 times 5, and carry the 1, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Did you get 502? Yes. And then I'm going to multiply straight across in the denominator. And what did you get for your denominator? 3. 3. And if I multiply a negative number times a positive number, my um, product is going to be? Negative. Negative 502 divided by 3. There you go. Nicely done, Ruby. Congratulations on that. And for a great problem, you've got yourself a ticket to the Kern County Fair. Hey, do remember, phone tutors are here until 5.30. And we're going to give you a break once again, young man, because we have another phone caller online. This is a fifth grade student, Tegan. How are you this afternoon? Good. Good. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Um, great. So go ahead okay. and read it. Go ahead, Tegan. So, it's, okay, Mario bikes at the rate of seven miles per hour. If he takes the longer route, direct route from the park entrance to the mountain, for how many complete hours will Mario bike? So Mario bikes seven miles per hour? Yes. Do you know the distance from the park to the mountain? Um, so there's different distances. Um, there's the longer route, which is 38 miles, and then a few other routes, but the one for this one is 38 miles. So you're going to go 38 miles, and you're going to go seven miles per hour, so you need to know how long it's going to take you? Um, it's how many complete hours will he? Right. So okay. So the time. So okay. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go 30 miles at seven miles per hour, what should I do? What operation should I use here? Um, division. So if I divide, that's gonna give me um, how many miles in one hour? What if I multiply? Okay. So. Can you multiply 38 and 7? Um, that is... So, he's going to go 266 miles, right? Yes. Can you tell me, ask me the question one more time? What's the question? Um, if he takes the longer direct route from the, from the park entrance to the mountain, for how many complete hours will Mario bike? So how many hours will it take? And you've got two minutes. Okay. So how many complete hours will it take? So if we take the long route, we've gone two, uh, 266 miles, right? Okay. And um, I know that we're going seven miles per hour. So now I'm going to divide 266 by seven, because 266 is the total. And we're going to divide that by seven. And how many times does 7 go into 206? How many times does 7 go into 26? Three, three, three times. Three. 
and oh wait <laughs> i'm stuck right because you're gonna go 38 <laughs> miles so just think about it logically okay <laughs> if you're gonna go seven miles an hour after one hour how far have you gone can you say that again if you're going seven miles an hour right okay in one hour how far have you gone seven miles right yeah. Okay. And you need to go 38 miles. So seven times what will get you close to 38? Um. Seven times five is 35, right? Yeah. So okay. seven times five. Right. So then we have 35. We have three left over, right? Yeah. So it's going to take a little over five hours to bike those 38 miles. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yes. All right. You know what? What I want you to do is I want you to come up with another problem. Give us another call and we'll make sure that you have this problem done correctly and your next problem as well. But for now, you've got yourself your ticket to the Kern County Fair, so thanks for that phone call, Tegan, and we'll hear from you in just a few moments. Right now, we do have one last opportunity to head on out to the Kern County Fair and see how Mary Lou is doing, and we'll see if we can find out. We are back at the great Kern County Fair, and right now, we're situated in the Firefighters Association area. And again, I am with my three co-hosts today, and I'm gonna have each one of you guys let everybody know who you are, what grade you're in, and what school you go to. Hi, I'm Olivia, I'm in eighth grade, and I go to Freedom Middle School. Hi, I'm Eden, I'm in fifth grade, and I go to Patriot. Hi, I'm Lacey, I'm, I'm in third grade, and I go to Patriot. Okay, ladies, so at the beginning of the show, we had a whole bunch of kids guess how many shapes are in the bucket, right? Yep. So let's go ahead. Here's the guesses. We had 12 kids guess. Can we put, can you guys put these in order for me from yeah. least on this side to greatest over here? Can you do that for me? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That, yeah. Or there's another 210. And so we can just put them on top of them. There's 100. Well, all of them have to show. So what are you going to do to have all of them show? All done? All done? Wait. Let's, let's double check for me, you guys. Double check. Always double check 80, your work. 100, 155, 200, 200. 210, another 210, 211, 254, another 254, 304, 301,001. Okay, wow. So we have a big range of numbers. So when we're talking measures of central tendencies, a range is going from the smallest number to the largest. So what is our smallest number? 80. Okay. What's our largest number? 301,000. So it's 301,001. All right. So we have our smallest number. We have our largest number. What do you think is the number in the middle? How do we find? I'm going to ask you, Olivia. Okay. How do we find our number in the middle? What's a trick we could use to find out what is the number in the middle? It, which is called the, the median, okay? Yeah. Um, you can take all your numbers and count how many numbers you have and then divide them by two. Okay, what's another way? Because we ha have the numbers in front of us and they're movable. So what do you think is another quick way we could use? And like split them up in the group. Okay, so how many total numbers were there again, ladies? Twelve. Twelve. What's half a 12? Because you talked about splitting the numbers in half. What's half a 12? Six. Six. So let's count in six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now let's count in six this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So both of these, this is the middle, right? Yeah. But these are both the same, same. Because they're both the same, what's my number in the middle then? 210. What is it? 210. It's actually, it's 210. Because they're the same number, they're the middle number because actually it's what comes between 210. But they're the same number. So if I were to add these up and divide them by two, would I still get 210? Yes. 
Yes, right? So our median is 202. We know our, our, our smallest number, the least is 80, our greatest is 301,001. Now, the mean is the average number. So if we added all of these numbers up and divided it by two, not two, Six. how many numbers or are 12. here? 12. 12. So you add up all your numbers and you divide it by how many are in the set, which is 12. 12. We actually are going to get our mean, our average guess of 224. That's a lot different. 224 falls right about here. Yeah. That's a lot different than what we actually see as our median, our middle number for our guesses. So, but let's talk about this number here. That is a really large number, isn't it? Yeah. Do, so if we pulled that number out, okay, would this more make a better estimate of what's happening here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What about this? Could we pull that out? Yeah. Do you think that that's too low? Yeah. Okay, so we can pull that out. So our middle number, is it going to change now? Yes. Well, let's count. How many numbers do we have now? Ten. ten. So what's half of ten? Five. five. So count in five. One, two, three, four, five. Count in five. One, two, three, four, five. Did our median change? No, it did No. Not. But you know what? Our average, our mean will change if we add them all up because we pulled those out. So our mean would. So before we give our answer, because actually in here there is a correct answer, if we asked more students, more than 12, because we have a large crowd here at the fair, right? Yeah. Do you think our word median would change? Yeah. Why? Because you're adding more numbers to it, so it would make it larger. Yeah. Would it make it a larger set? So do you think that in larger crowds, you would have a better estimate of people getting the correct answer? Yes. Yes. Okay, you guys ready to find out what the answer is? Yes. And I bet everybody at home is watching. Okay, give me a drum roll, please. The correct answer is? And we had two people who guessed 250. 254. All right. So that's it, ladies. Did you have fun today? Thank you so much for joining me here at the fair. I had a great time with you. And I think I am going to go back and get me some pie. Okay. All right. That's it from the great Kern County Fair. Remember, they're here until Sunday. Come on down. Make sure you visit the Pie and Cobbler. That's it. We'll send it back to the studio. All right. Thanks for that, Mary Lou. Great work with the students out there today as far as the guesses and things like that. And she said, make sure you visit the Pine Cobbler. I've already done that and might make another visit out there. Anyway, Cooper, how many objects did you think were in that container? I think there are 94 because for me, I think there's less than 100, but I think it's close to 100. Okay. How did, why, why did you think it's less than 100? I mean, what are you thinking of as you're looking at that? Um, they're bigger shapes, so they take up more space. Okay, so you've got some bigger shapes in there. Do you have any idea what any of these shapes are? Um, you know you've got a square, right? Square, triangle, yeah. diamond. Yeah, so they're all different sizes. Anyway, close. 254 objects were in that container right there. Just a reminder, phone tutors are available every Tuesday and Wednesday between 3.30 and 5.30. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.